Hello again. We're going to be talking about inverse variation. And basically what inverse variation means is y equals k over x, where y stands for a variable y, x stands for the variable x, and k stands for the constant of variation, which is just a number. That's all it really is. So I've got this problem where it says y varies inversely with x. That's basically how you would read it. That's how you would write it. And my problem that I'm going to put into addition with it is if y equals 8 and x equals 6, write an equation that models this information. So, uh, assuming that y varies inversely with x and you have this problem right here, you're supposed to solve for it. And that's something that's typical in a math book. So, that said, let's go ahead and try this. So, what we do is we write y equals k over x. Now, y is 8. I don't know my constant of variation, and my x is 6. If I want to solve for k, just cross multiply, so that's what I'm going to do. k equals 48, but what this problem basically means, what it entails is I want to write any sort of equation that works for any sort of y and any sort of x given this stipulation right here. Well, okay. My students don't really understand what that means, but we go through the motions and we try it, and then it's like, okay, it's not that bad. Y equals, my K is 48, over X. All I'm really doing is substituting to figure out what the K is. And once I do that, I'm done. And that's an example of an inverse variation type problem. Chain inverse mm, function, I suppose, depending on the domain itself. But we'll just go with variation for right now. So I put up three examples right here on what could be inverse variation and what might not be inverse variation. And what you have to realize is you have to solve for x. I'm sorry, pardon me, solve for y. Get y by itself. And as long as it works under the form y equals k over x, it's an inverse variation. And if it doesn't, it's garbage. Well, it's not garbage, but it's not inverse variation. So I have x times y equals 2, solve for y. This works. y equals k over x, k is 2, fine. y is right here, x is in the denominator, it's an inverse variation type problem. As long as it models this form, y equals k over x, where k is some number, and x is in the denominator, you're good to go. Now if I try this one, students say, yeah, this, this one's inverse variation. No, it's not. Cross multiply. y over 2 equals x, y equals 2x. x is in the numerator, and so is y. That's not an inverse variation type problem. That's a direct variation, which we talked about some time ago when we did linear uh, equations, linear functions. So this is direct variation. This is inverse variation. This is neither of them. And the very simple reason why is, in order for it to be direct variation, it has to be y equals kx. I'll go ahead and re-elaborate on that again not kx plus something, and the x isn't in the denominator uh, with just a number over x, so it's not inverse. This is just a linear function. Well, direct variation is a linear function too, but it's um, y inverse up to 0. This one is 4, so that doesn't work. So this is just a linear, and it's neither direct nor inverse. Although this one right here, y equals 2x is linear, but it's a direct variation. And what's really cool about inverse variation type problems and why we do this is because we graph uh, many different types of problems. What an inverse variation type problem looks like is something like that. But there's more to it than that, and we'll get to that when we start graphing inverse variation type problems. But for right now, that's a very brief introduction into inverse variation. Simple as that. I'll repeat it one more time because this begs repeating. Why? Y. Varies just means equals. Inversely with x, that means inversely the x goes in the denominator. And you have to always have a k in the numerator no matter what. With that said, we're done with that brief little introduction. Have a good day for now. Goodbye.